free. Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. The statute regarding who was in control of the body. Any questions regarding donations, regarding organ donations? Yes, Do they want donations from old bodies? <laughs> My understanding of how that works, we don't get involved with the criteria of who gets selected to do a donation. Um, if you pass away at the hospital, um, they're required to notify New England Organ Bank and give them the circumstances of the cause of your death, your age, um, if you had any other types of illnesses or anything like that. And if they deemed you to be a candidate for donation, then they would follow up with your next of kin and have more questions to make sure that you were a candidate before they sent somebody out to do anything. But one of the interesting things that we found is that the issue in m many of these cases is whether you have tissue or bones that would, be, that would be needed or could be of use to someone, right? So oftentimes your organs, if you're, if you're very old, maybe organs that you, you're not ready, nobody really wants, is looking for a 95-year-old pancreas, you know? But, <laughs> but, 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 but tissue and bones, you know, it, it may very well be. It may very well be. And once again, that was the reason why they were kind of looking. And, 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 by, and by the way, you just made the observation, and Michael did too, it, literally under the law, if you, are, if you die in a nursing home, if you die in a hospital, right, if a policeman or a fireman is with you, right, your body cannot be released, right, cannot be released until the organ bank has said it's okay to release the body. The reason, one of the reasons I mention that is I, we knew of a case, actually there was another funeral director from Southboro who mentioned that the, the mother had died, the son was getting these calls from the New England Organ Bank and didn't answer the calls because he didn't want to be making a donation. But as a result of that, the body, which was still in the hospital, could not be released to the funeral home so that they could start doing stuff because until the organ bank tells the hospital it's okay, the hospital won't release the body. So, you know, it, whether, whether you want um, to, uh, as on behalf of the deceased, whether you want the, the body to be um, donated or not, you gotta make the call. You gotta make the call, okay? Just to make sure, yes ma'am? Well, this must be the whole table that's really interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you have We've been studying it. Go ahead. Yes. No, you, you can do it. Okay. Did I understand you correctly to say that unless you uh, state definitely no donations, it is possible that, that uh, you'll be making a donation? I believe that they would request from your next of kin that if they were looking for donations or needed something, they would, they would ask your next of kin you know, would they consider donation of X, but, Y, or Z? But you had made but, the definite uh, in writing, no donations, that would be respected. That would, that would be it. That's correct. That would be it. That's correct. So if you said no, then it's no. If you haven't said anything, then the person who is in charge of your remains, first is the healthcare proxy, second is the personal representative, third is the next of kin, the spouse, and then the next of kin, right? Whoever is in charge of your remains can make that decision for you. Okay, so that to the extent that you want to do that limitation, we we'll, really we've been talking to our people that do powers that do healthcare proxies. I mean, before I read this law, I said, who knew? Who knew this? That I always thought healthcare proxies died at death, but the health that the proxy actually has charge of the remains. So we've been including it in the healthcare proxy. Yes, ma'am. Um, I will think of the case of Alistair Cook, who was a well-known writer and television personality, British fellow died when he was 91, and they harvested his bones and some other things without permission from the family. They took x-rays and found out that his bones had been replaced by pipes or something. But anyway, I guess they can use older uh, specimens. So you said you said that, that, that you heard that Alistair Cook, when he died, that his, that his body got donated without anyone's permission. That must be England. <laughs> no, no or, or, or it could be another state. It could be that those are the rules in another state. What we're, what we're talking about here is Massachusetts. If he died in Massachusetts, these are the rules. I was always told that if you died in Marcus Vinia, this was years ago, oh, that you may as well forget. <coughs> well, this is Massachusetts. But whenever I go to the mansion house, they always, they always say, how are things back in America? 
That, that because of the time restraints, if you die here, that your organs would already start to, you know, decay or whatever, and that, that you couldn't donate your organs, but I understand they'll send somebody down now? Well, my experience is that it's more like tissue or corneas or things like that, but, you know, vital organs, no. So, so the, your question was, you, you know, it was your understanding that s since par body parts have to be harvested fairly quickly, that's one of the reasons why it didn't happen here. And I guess Mike is saying that that's actually not the case regarding something. Right? Yes, sir. Um, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Do you have to go through this rigmarole if you're going to be cremated? Do you have to go through this rigmarole if you're going to be cremated? We're going to talk about cremation later on, okay. but the answer is yes. Yes. The, 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 the New England Oregon Bank you know, still has to release your body before it can be disposed of in any way. Okay. Other questions regarding this? No. Questions on what Mike had talked about regarding your, you know, doing some kinds of instructions and really writing some things down ahead of time. We're going to talk more about prepaids and stuff in a little in a little while. And by the way, I can't. Yes, sir. But but even if a person writes it down, what's to stop that healthcare proxy from saying yes? Uh, it, it, the question is, even if the person writes it down, and, and now are you it specifically no. referring, referring to, the, to the body, the organ donation? Yes. The statute. The statute says that if you have in writing okay. said that you don't want your body to be donated, then, and I guess the reason why that, I know that's become of some significance. I brought this up in my paralegal. It used to be Brenda Costa, who was here someplace. Oh, I knew she was around. And now this other great paralegal who actually got hired because they told me, She's like Brenda Costa 20 years ago. She's this wonderful woman. So anyway, she was all, she said, this is a big concern. Her husband is a Russian Orthodox priest. Who knew? Converted from Catholicism. And apparently they can't be, they can't have their body donated. It's kind of, at the, and, and did you say that that's true for, for the Jewish Orthodox also? That's my understanding. Oh, yeah. that, 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 that also may be the case. So um, any other questions regarding this? Yes, sir. Take saying the five wishes Mm -hmm. speaks to this, you give a copy to the doctor, and it's on file at the hospital. So the, it says that, uh, you know, you don't want to be cremated, or you don't want or do, or you don't want to give donor. Uh, yeah. uh, so you're saying the five thing. wishes statement speaks to that. that. Because there is no official form, so there could be any one of these forms that could actually suffice for this. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, ma'am. Do you have the exact um, date? or year that they changed that statue, because I think a lot of people who will volunteer to be a healthcare proxy, they don't realize how important this is and how they can come and butt heads with a family member. Right. I can almost guarantee you that if you called your lawyer, you'd have no idea that this had occurred. I know I, when I did the research, I then did a presentation in our department, because I'm now, I'm at Myrick O'Connell. There were a lot of lawyers, you know? So there were like 52 of us, right? So there was, a, we did a presentation of the other four or five lawyers. Nobody had heard of this. And it's really important. It's really important, right? And that's right, you, it may change the way you think about volunteering to be the proxy. Or you may want the person to say, I don't want to do the remains, right? I'll do the hospital, but I, I'll unplug you, but I don't want to do the remains, you know? That's true. That's true. Other, other questions on this? Isn't that interesting? It's kind of I good think trip. it goes back to what you're talking about, though. It's important to put things in place and in writing so that everybody understands what your wishes are, whether it's five wishes or more than that. Um, and then, you know, if you have children that maybe don't quite get along or see eye to eye, you know, make sure that they understand what your wishes are and this is what you want to have happen. Um, and then that would save, you know, a lot of problems at, when the time comes. Mike makes an excellent point. There's th I guess th if there's any kind of broad takeaway from this, it's just, you know, do your kids a favor. It's, I think it's a little different with spouses, but especially with kids, do your kids a favor to the extent that you can lay out any of this. I mean, your death, I mean, you're dead, so you're not worried, right? But from the, the folks around you, I mean, that's a very stressful time. And to the extent that you can really help them through that, I know, once again, another funeral director, also in South Road, must be something about South Road, said they actually, he actually, she actually remembered ones with the, 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 uh, the, there were two brothers that were in one of the big black limos behind the hearse and got out of, at the, at the, uh, at the um, cemetery. And one of them was all bloody. They had had a fist fight in the back of the limo 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were fighting about how much the funeral would cost, but we'll go back to that. That's my <laughs> official list later on. Um, so now cremation. What about, what about cremation? So um, you can be cremated, you, as, you, as was just pointed out. You can leave instructions regarding whether or not you're going to be cremated. Uh, there were just a couple of rules regarding cremation. Um, one is that you cannot be cremated within 48 hours of the, of the time you die. And two, the medical examiner has to sign off. Because the thing about cremation is you can't take it back, you know? And so that if there is any question regarding issues about, about right. the reason for which you died, right, uh, the medical examiner wants to be able to check that. Um, can you, give, can you talk some more about cremation? Sure. Just, sure. I think one of the biggest misconceptions with cremation is that people think that if they're going to have cremation, that they can have no other services either before right. or after the cremation takes place. So if somebody they wishes to have something at a church or a funeral home uh, with their body present before cremation, mm -hmm. they can do that. And instead of the uh, hearse going to the cemetery, it goes to the crematory. That's an option for some people. Other people don't want to do that, and they would like to have cremation take place or basic cremation take place first, and then have a private or public service afterwards. Um, and those are kind of the options. I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions, that um, people hear the word cremation and they think that that's it. That's the only thing I can do, and that's not the case. It's the same as earth burial, whether it's going to a crematory or going to a cemetery. Um, and I think that's important for people to have that information. And Mike, have you, have you heard, are there, once again, are there any religious um, restrictions regarding this? That, do you know of any particular religions for which cremation is simply not allowed? I know for a long time it was assumed that was true among Catholics, and we know that that's not the case that's now. Correct, yeah. I mean, the Catholic Church, is my understanding, is that cremation can take place, um, and then you can have a funeral mass and burial. The, the Catholic Church, I believe their view on that is that the cremated remains should be buried in the ground, not scattered or kept out of the ground. Um, but it is allowable. Yes, sir. And then you may. Yes, sir. Is a casket required for cremation? Is a casket required for cremation? The quick answer is no, but the crematory requires that a person be placed into something, and that something is referred to, um, step back for one second, funeral homes are regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. One of the regulations states that we have to give you information. The information is that a, it's not a casket, it's referred to as an alternative container or a cremation casket. So you need to be placed into something to be cremated in. But it does not have to be a big fancy casket or anything like that. And, it, and is there an, an automatic difference between a cremation casket and a regular casket? One's, I shouldn't wood, say regular. one's wood and one's metal. <laughs> That's easy. And you can have a traditional casket that is wood as well, but you cannot cremate a metal casket. Did you say there was a cardboard box on the casket? I did not say that, but the minimum... Uh, did, you, did you say there was a cardboard box? You <laughs> <laughs> want that on TV? The minimum... <laughs> <laughs> The minimum alternative container is a wooden pallet bottom with a cardboard cover. Okay, so that's the simplest. Did you say there yes. could be no return of ashes? I have heard of that. Did you say there could be no return of ashes? I have heard of that. But I, I don't know what you mean. You, you mean that you don't, you want a situation As a matter of fact, in another state, in a, in a state, uh, in a southern state, there is, uh, for that state, if an option, no return of ashes, and if that, if the family did not want, or there was no family, um, there is a rose garden in Arden, North Carolina, as a matter of fact, where the ashes go over uh, probably an acre amount of roses. So, so you're saying that in North Carolina, in another you're, state. You're, you're aware of the fact that there is an option to not return the ashes. Actually, I'll give you a piece of trivia. There actually is something in the statute regarding cremation that says that it helped that hit to help the funeral homes because one of the issues that I had heard among some funeral homes is the ashes start piling up. By the way, they're not called ashes; they're called cremains. The cremains because ashes would be the bone and stuff like that. And and the, so the statute says that if once the funeral director has had ashes for a or cremains for a year, if they haven't been picked up, they're allowed to 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 spread them in an appropriate location designated by the local cemetery. 